You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nery here from Drake Wayne Gaming. It's something about Twitter, the gaming drag today. I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus, Runes Path. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. But I need someone to talk to. I don't want to be alone this cold evening. Hi, uh, we went out for a walk? Yes, it's a nice afternoon. I thought I could take my groove box with me and go compose something outside again. Can I go with you? I don't feel like staying inside. He looks to the side, paws closed and pressed to his jacket, wind blowing his hair into disarray. Maybe he wants to be alone, or maybe he doesn't want to go with me. He seems to be thinking hard about it before answering me. You can. It might be nice to spend some time together. I thought about walking up one of the hills here. We might have a nice view from the top. A view would be nice. Maybe I could maybe I could even get some nice photos. Though this is a little, this though with this little light I doubt it. Anything to get my mind off the stag sitting alone in his room, furious. Mm-hmm. I'm in. Absolute bleakness. I'm swimming in darkness, black tar pouring from the ceiling. There's no color, no light, no warmth. My songs, all the sketches I've recorded. I barely remember any of them. I never bothered to write them down. There's no way I can recreate them. Months of my work, all lost. Oh, Rune. I won't go on any student exchange. I'm not good enough. Why am I never good enough? I'm not even good enough to be put on the main team. I'll be their youngest player on the court. But once again, I'm on the bench. I try my best. Why is it never enough? And now the broken guitar, and it's only on me. I'm lying. I'm lying in bed and the wooden ceiling above me feels like a lid of a coffin. I'm lying in bed, my paws on my chest, feeling it rise and fall. I'm lying in bed, legs straight, hooves dangling from the side, and I feel like running. I'm lying in bed, heart beating fast, and I can't calm it down. I'm lying in bed and I feel like I'm sinking. I'd rather feel nothing, I'd rather feel nothing than this. We walk through the trees, branches blocking the moon, its round face peeking through and full only every few seconds, only every few steps. The air seems thick, saturated with fog and darkness, growing denser with every step. So heavy is the atmosphere in a, in a, in a forest at night. Everything around us is brimming with life, but feels hostile. We don't belong here. The creaking of branches and shapes moving in the darkness all tell us that we're intruders, stepping on land that isn't ours. But side by side, our shoulders rubbing together, we press forward, following the barely visible path like a promise of safe passage. Doesn't this remind you of something? It does. My heart is brimming. We're going deeper, deeper into the night, deeper into the past. The wall between us cracks and shatters, just like that. The present and the past join, and we're kids again. The same two who spent their whole days together, running through forests, swimming in lakes, listening to music in the house, in my house, cuddling together in one bed. Funny how things end to become the past. Something that was but something that was but isn't. I didn't want our friendship to end, even if it was me who left you behind. I think the hat was I think I was the happiest back then, you know. Then I wasn't. Something changed and I felt like I needed to run away. Shouldn't life only get better? Aren't we building something? Each alone and all together? Why couldn't this happiness carry on? I think we're getting there. Alone. That's what I am. Alone my whole life. Everything I hold in my paws crumbles. I try my hardest. Why is it never enough? Why am I never enough? I don't even know where I want to be or who I am. I'm pulled apart in so many directions, spread thin across contradictory versions of myself. Defeated. I feel defeated. One by one, the ropes snap and I fall to the ground. I don't want anyone to see me defeated. I cannot be weak. It's so humiliating, and Carvin has seen me like that. How can I, look, how can I ever look him in the eye again? Think, uh, think of the look in his eyes and sink deeper. I think it's time. What do I have to lose, anyway? I like I like a reset button. That's what he said. It sounds like what I needed. My paws shake as I stand up from the bed. I still battle with my thoughts, standing at the desk. Inner pocket of my backpack, inside a pack of wet wipes, hidden at the very bottom. I sit down on the floor and open the zipper. Oh. Is he doing drugs? Three years. 
Feels like a lifetime. Did you think about me in the meanwhile? Occasionally. I missed you, of course, but as the months passed, your image grew more and more blurry, fading into the past. The past isn't reality. The past is a sea of memories tinted with emotions, selected and twisted. It's unreliable. It always looks better than it actually was. You? A lot. Not every day, but often. It was hard not to. The time we spent together was the happiest I've ever been. It was a blueprint for all the future friendships I've had. I rehearsed them all with you first. Yeah, I can say the same. How stupid I was to leave you behind. I can barely imagine that now. A total kid, confused and scared. Afraid of rejection. Afraid of himself. I didn't mean any harm. I, I was just selfish. I thought of myself only and never considered how it would make you feel. It's even worse, perhaps. I was a shitty friend. I needed way too much time to understand what my actions, how my actions affect others, too. That we don't live our lives alone. I'm sorry that I abandoned you and ran away. I don't expect you to forgive me. But I'm happy that I can be here with you now. The howling wind. It's the only response to my words. But then the wolf leans on my shoulder with a sigh. I am too. I lean on the windowsill, snout pressed to the cold glass. Her breaths leave a foil of moisture on the surface, spreading apart from the point my nose meets the pane. It's cold, so cold, but it can't be. I know this. This is a triple pane window, but it is. It makes me want to laugh. <laughs> Funny. Did I finally snap? I don't care about anything anymore. Cold glass, warm paws, antlers scraping against the wood. Wood, glass, fur, bone. My flesh melts into them. Boundaries dissolving. Something's changing. Hmm. Blow on that whistle, coach. All the furniture in the cafeteria got to rearrange for the film. The tables are lined up at the walls, our food waiting on one of them, and the layers of blankets are laying on the floor untidily. Oh, I know this look. Eyeing the food already? You know I'm hungry. When did we eat? Three hours ago? I know. You're always hungry. Hey, I know much, I know much bigger foodies than I. It's you who oddly, who is oddly unconcerned with what you eat. Incredible how the atmosphere between is cleared. It feels almost like having the old Miko back. Still, I can't enjoy it as much as I would normally when I so much as blink. Rune's face, Rune's face reading the email appears before my eyes. I thought I'd seen him here, but I scanned the room quickly, and the only antlers I see in the crowd definitely aren't his. My unease turns from a bad feeling at the back of my head to an overwhelming worry. He's likely still in his room. Maybe he'll come later for the film. I don't know him well enough to say, but the look in his eyes when he was asking me to leave it was scary. Everything alright? Yeah, well, no. I hoped I'd see Rune here. I'm a bit worried, but it's a long story. Miko nods, a lot nods only. He luckily knows when not to press. Maybe he'll get here soon. Supper just started. I hope so. How about you find us a good spot and I'll bring us food? Sure. I leave Mako and cross the room to the table with food. What are we getting today? It's like rice sandwiches, beetroot, horseradish, and, and rocket on thin slices of bread. Plus a small slice of a pie with what looks like cashew cream topped with a layer of cooked fruits. The little wolf might be right. Even if I don't eat that much, I'm still a total foodie, but right now it's not food that is on my mind. It's scary how worry kills my whole appetite. With a sigh, I grab his two plates and two water bottles, then turn around to look for the wolf in the small crowd occupying the floor. And there he is, sitting near the back of the room with Travis, the tanuki finishing his meal already. Carvin, hello! Hey, uh, how's the food? Good! The cake is fantastic today! He swallows the last bite of it, a wide smile on his face. I was just telling Miko about traditional Japanese street food. I can't wait to go around and try y yakinori at night. I nod, not really in the mood for conversation, nor for food. Why the long, why the long face? You look like something's eating you. It's supper. You should be the one eating. I, eh, it's weird listening about Japan right now. You know that Rune also applied to the program. He just got a rejection letter. Oh, I, I didn't know. I know, yes, I got another email with instructions and names of other people that got in. The program is super selective. I think it's the hardest out of the exchange programs at our university to get into. 
They have a preference for students with some Japanese language knowledge. I know I would have never gotten in if it wasn't fairly if I wasn't fairly proficient already. It's sad. I'd have loved to go with him. He seems like an interesting person. Did you talk with him? No, I haven't seen him since the sauna. Besides, I might take it the wrong way. I got in after all. I wouldn't want to rub it in his face. Maybe he'll have better luck next year. It's open for all years if I remember right. Maybe. I take a bite of the sandwich mindlessly, not really in the mood to discuss it. Maybe I shouldn't worry so much. We likely just need some time, and I'll talk with him later today. I'll only sit and worry all evening if I don't stop now. Still, maybe it'd be nice to know that the deer is okay. Leaving him alone now feels wrong. I send him a quick message asking how he's feeling and if he'll come for the film, putting the phone along with my worries back in my pocket. The empty plates lie beside us on the floor in a stack. A swarm of voices around is growing louder as the students finish eating and the time for the film is approaching. Rune still isn't here. I check my phone for maybe the 30th time. Nope, no new messages. I feel like I should do something. I won't be able to focus on the film anyway. Hey, I have to go do something quickly. I'll try to come back for the film. Going to check up on Rune? Yeah, I feel like I should. Good luck! I'll save you a spot. I stand up and start making my way towards the door. Then I notice Devin wanting to grab him, waving to me to grab my attention. Garvin, have you seen Rune, maybe? A while ago, I was just about, I was just about to go to his room. I tried looking for him there, but I don't think he was inside. Nobody answered when I knocked. Oh, I hoped I'd find him there. He didn't reply to my messages. Mine neither. Well, I have to stay here and play the movie. If you find him, maybe tell him a word of encouragement. He might not be in a good mood. Oh, you know about the exchange program? Yes, I talked to Travis. So you've met with him after the email. I was with him while he was reading it. How'd he take it? Well, he asked me to leave the room. And smash his guitar, but I think it's better to admit that. <sighs> not good. I was afraid he'd start beating himself up over this. In any case, if you see him, tell me to come over to talk if he needs to. Will do, coach. Yeah, he's probably turning into a lava lamp in his room. My steps, mostly muffled by the thick carpet, echo in the quiet corridor. Each dull thud feels wrong, like I'm disturbing something. The door to Rune's room is just ahead of me. Approaching it, I feel like an intruder. I mean, he threw me out himself just an hour ago. I don't even know if he's inside, though, and it's been more than an hour. Even with how furious he seemed, I hope he calmed down. My body shivers as I knock, then brace myself. There's no response. At least for a few seconds, then I hear some movement inside, so I knock again. This time very gently. More of a tap and call out loud. Rune? No. The door opens slightly, half the deer peeking from behind it. His hair is disheveled and his eyes bloodshot. This is a sorry view, like a bucket of cold water on my head, washing away the hope that the deer dealt with the outburst. Hey, I thought I'd come by to see how you're doing. But now that I see him, the answer seems obvious. Rune looks around the corridor. There's something unnerved about him, a certain look in his eyes as they dart left and right repeatedly. Can you come in? I think I need help. I nod. The panicked note in his voice makes me think it's better to act first and ask questions later. It's dark in his room with just the bedside table lamp on. The guitar lies next to his desk, net broken and strings coiled on the ground like snakes. It looks like a shipwreck, similarly useless. It's stuffy inside, and the first thing I do when I enter is go over to the window to open it, first looking back at room for permission. No, you let the cold air in. You're feeling cold? It's warm here, easily warm enough for me. Maybe Rune has a fever. With the window open, yes, and in general, too. He's shivering. Are you feeling all right? You don't look good. Maybe you caught the flu in town. No, I... He's not just shivering, he's panicking. Carvin, can I ask you not to tell anyone, and especially, especially not Devin? Sure, but about what? All right, y'all, I'm gonna pause it right there. Devin, did you smoke, did you smoke the devil's grass? I mean, Rune, did you smoke the devil's grass? It's okay if you did, buddy. I'm about to pop an edible myself. <laughs> All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold tier patron, Trezum Guy. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to your ultimate tier. Anyway, if you all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for more contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.